know the Minister for Roads. Yes, the contract will have been awarded by a ministry that he has no control over. Yes, because he is the representative of the people of Suwame. He is the face of government in Suwame, and therefore he will personally be held accountable by the electorate for acts beyond his control. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's a timely reminder uh, of the frustration of the people of Ghana. It's unfortunate it happened, but it's part of the occupational hazard that we have to go through. And there's a point to make where you say you are captives of politics that you do not control. Uh, what do you mean when you say that? Well, the issue at stake was that was about roads in Swami or a particular road. The Minister for Parliamentary Affairs has absolutely no control over the contractor. The best he can do is to lobby, plead, beg, etc. Um, that comes directly under the domain of the Ministry of Roads. And yet, he is the bull's eye as far as the people of Swami are concerned. And that is why I say he's captive. He has no control over the contractor, has no control over payment. A number of road projects delayed because contractors put in some investment, expecting to be reimbursed, expecting that their certificates will be honored for them to plow back into the project. The certificates are not honored, no, therefore no payments are made. And they literally also send almost abandon the work, hoping that until they are paid, they don't continue. And that is beyond the control of any member of parliament, even if it's the majority leader. But I was also wondering, should a politician ordinarily also not be able to read the room? That is being able to tell how the people feel at a particular time and avoid particular fanfares. Because in this instance, I understand he went there with the contractor because the contractor was returning to site. And that was where the people got angry with him. Perhaps if that fanfare was avoided, he would not have been in this position. Yeah, well, personally, personally, I will not have. But uh, we have choices and we probably read or misread the mood of the people. And therefore, again, you can never guarantee the reaction of your constituents. That is, if they were all constituents. Remember, Swami Magazine is uh, a magnet that attracts mechanics and uh, craftsmen from all over the city. It's unfortunate it happened to the majority leader, the Minister for Parliamentary Affairs. But um, you cannot also say that people have no right to express their disappointment. Uh, and then finally on this matter, I'm wondering whether Parliament should treat it as a, a, a man and his employers having an issue. Uh, Parliament should find it offensive that a leader of this has been treated in this manner. How do you respond to something like this? Well, personally, I would just let it go. Because, you see, it's a delicate balance. Yes, it's a leader of parliament. And therefore, any such occurrence who can be interpreted as a flare on parliament. However, there is a bigger issue. The bigger issue is that of democracy. Uh, parliament exists because we have a democratic practice, and therefore parliament cannot be bigger than uh, the democratic practice that best parliament. So personally, I think it's just better to let it go. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing those thoughts on that issue with, with me. Um, let, let's move on to the discussion for which we called you. I am sure you've listened to the finance minister's listed response, but I, I have not as yet had a conversation with you on why you think he should go. 
so let's start from that point. Why is Dr. Kobna Donko convinced that a minister of finance should not be at position at this time? Well, since we're talking about the Ministry of Finance, let me start with a quotation from First Chronicles chapter 12, verse, verse 32 of the Bible. The King James Version says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do. And that, for me, is a critical thing. The understanding of the times and what they ought to do. Look, we, we live in fin financially turbulent times. Here is a minister who had done well in the private sector, but who has been thrown into the public arena with no political experience and who had vowed uh, just about a month ago that this country was not going to the fund. We were capable, we had the resources uh, to go through the turbulence without going to the, resorting to the fund for a bailout. Having said this, less than a month, we, we, you've been directed by the president to go to the fund. The least you can do for reasons of public morality, public ethics, is to thank Mr. President for having given you the opportunity to serve this country. But tell him you are resigning, let somebody else come and leave this new face. You led the face where we exited an IMF program with a massive kinky party, celebrated also. And now we're going back to IMF. This time, not, not with a cap in hand, but with a bucket in hand. Because the fiscal deficit has become bigger. The debt to GDP is rumored to be around 90% if you take all the contagion liability that uh, had been buried under the carpet, such as ESLA, ESLA TLC, etc. So debt to GDP is expensive. Debt repayments, huge debt repayments are coming up. Euro bond, Sino Hydro, etc. They are all coming up. And there is no way Ghana can pay without some form of bailout because we'll, we will default. Therefore, should it still be the same person who vowed that we'll never go to the farm, we had the resources, we had the intellectual where without, should it be the same person leading us now virtually on our knees to the fund? No. Public morality, political morality, Public ethics require that such a person stand up. And like uh, the scripture says, and knowing the time and knowing what to do happen to be critical at this time. We live in unsavory time. Very difficult. The dollar has crossed the eight. Remember, the dollar has crossed the eight. It's broken the eight. Today, the dollar is 8.3. And so in such times, men and women of integrity must take responsibility. And the best way to take responsibility is to say, Mr. President, I thank you for the opportunity to serve, get a new team, to take over this phase of our national life. They can advise from the background, but it is just proper. It is just ethical. It is just morally right for him to step down. But the fact that he hasn't taken that step, uh, is that not to suggest that he doesn't uh, think that the the most ethical or more morally right thing to do at this time is to resign uh, do we need to tell him what he should be determining uh, as moral 
or ethical at this time? We should, unless there's no morality in public life. If we want to say there is no morality in public life, fine, but I believe there's morality in public life. There are, uh, there are ethics, ethics of behavior, ethics of composure, ethics of composition in public life. This is Ghana. Ghana must take precedence over everything else. I have a personal principle that I call GPS, Ghana Party Self. The interest of Ghana must override that of the party and that of self. And so, look, a new face leading the negotiation will give some comfort, some confidence than the same old person who said we won't go I don't believe in the IMF now leading us to negotiate with the IMF. That is just not right. That is just not right. As a people, we must begin to mature in more than one way. We must begin to mature politically. We must, in any other serious jurisdiction, the minister and him would have resigned. Must we encourage such intransigence? Must we encourage such non-accountability to the people? Must we encourage the politics of no ethics? I sincerely believe, like the children of Israel Kadim, should know the times we live in and must have an understanding. The understanding that a new team leading the negotiation will be beneficial to Ghana. Well, uh, le let me, I know you've heard it, but for the benefit of my listeners too, let me play to you his response to everything you've been uh, asking for. Of the economy. Finance Minister, do you agree with those who say that you should not be, you should not be holding conference within the current climate of the economy? Do you agree with that? Well, um, I think there, there are issues of um, the governance of a country. Then these are always important. Um, and I think if you see the way in which we have moderated um, the, the advertisement billboards, it shows to a party that is sensitive um, to the current moments of the situation. But I don't think you can ever let the issue of governance go. Democracy is important. It does cost some amount of money to do that. But clearly you can see an environment that is excited about the future by being able to run um, a congress or conference of this nature in a way that mimics uh, the situation in the world. Will you resign? Because of going to when you said we're not going to die. That's not a very good question, you know. It's almost like telling a father to <laughs> resign from his children because he's changed his mind. You know, there are times that decisions have to be made for the survival of a country. And therefore, if circumstances such as um, COVID or Ukraine war occur, which are not typical, it does change the environment and uh, sensible people. Doc, I'm sure you heard him. He says, first of all, he told the journalist, that's not a very good question to ask. So he thinks that the whole suggestion is not very good. Two, he compares himself to a father and says that you are actually asking him to resign, like asking a father to resign from his children because he has changed his mind. What do you say to that? You know, by the loss of Ghana and best practice elsewhere, when a father proves unable to look after his children, the state takes the children away from him and puts the children into care. They put the children into care. The Department of Social Work or Social Welfare will take the children and put them into care. In any case, in any case, who says Ghanaians are his children? Even that, that very concept is absurd. 
We are not asking His Excellency the President to resign. No, nobody has asked him to resign. We are asking him a highlight of the president to resign and give the president space to appoint somebody else. So to even think the people of Ghana or the nation of Ghana, to even think liken them to his to a father's children Ghana's in in itself is insulting to the conscience of Ghanaians. We are nobody's children. Not even His Excellency that we all call Father by virtue of our culture will say that. But he's a highly of the president. He's not the president. We must take responsibility. We cannot pretend otherwise. Positions come with privileges, but they also come with responsibility. And talking about Ukraine, Russia war, talking about COVID, one month ago, when he was making the promise that we were never going to go to the farm, did he know, was COVID not an existential threat? Was Ukraine, Russia war not being fought? You see, we should not allow public officers, including myself, to get away with just anything any utterance and we think it's acceptable. When he was making that promise that we will never go to IMF, it was only about a month ago, six months, six weeks ago. So it's not like the Ukraine-Russia war was not waging, nor COVID had not hit the world. Please, let's take responsibility. Let's salvage the little bit of dignity left in public office. There has to be some dignity. Other than that, a fragile nation state such as Ghana is endangered if there's no morality. At this point in time, there's one other person in this debate who a lot of people have asked. Why are you keeping him in office? You mentioned His Excellency the President. People are wondering, why are you keeping a finance minister who clearly has failed in office? Should you also be answering some questions? Because the finance minister insists he will not go. Well, if he will not go, there are options available to the Ghanaian state. There are options available in Parliament. There are options available to His Excellency, the President. And I believe his advisors, people who really love him as Finance Minister and have a, have a lot of respect for him, should be telling him to do the Honorable. So, he should be telling him. His Excellency, the President, the people of Ghana voted for him for a four-year term. That is that. But any other highland serves at the pleasure of the president. And which means that president can remove him? Yes, the president can have the power. The, whoever appoints has the power to remove. But we know the nature of politics. We know the nature of political relationships. If the president has a tithe, it behoves on the minister to make the work of the president easier by tendering in his resignation. Well, let me end by asking essentially what signals that should be sending to first the Ghanaian that a, a finance minister. Uh, is still in office, the president is not asking him to leave. Sh sh should that lower our expectations of what will come out of this? We talk about the option in parliament, but the requirement is quite huge for you to, to succeed in, uh, I think, a uh, censure attempt. So, what signals should we be picking from this old refusal to uh, and his insistence on staying in office? So I will ask myself, what is it in that office, or what? benefit is accruing to him that even at a time like this he still insists 
he hangs on to office. We should be asking ourselves, what is this? And that ministry, what benefit is he getting? Is it just prestige? Or is there some other beneficial interest that makes it almost impossible for him to resign honorably and save his dignity? It's, it is worrying. It is worrying. Well, Doc, uh, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. The pleasure is mine. Dr. Kobna Donko is Member of Parliament for Pruis, former Minister for Power, speaking uh, to us uh, on the issue of the Finance Minister who continues to stay in office.